Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to February. Believe it or not, it's the beginning of the final month of meteorological winter. Now we can have wintry weather beyond February, of course. We've had measurable snow in early May, twice over the last handful of years. But uh, for meteorological and climatological record-keeping purposes, uh, December, January, and February make up winter. We'll talk about uh, how our averages change here in the final month of the uh, season coming up. But first, let's close the book on January. Factoring in yesterday's final numbers, uh, the month finished in a tie for fifth place on the list of warmest Januaries on record. Uh, combining highs and lows, the average temperature in January, 35.5 degrees. Now, that's still five degrees cooler than the all-time record January back in 1932. But still, of course, way above the average, almost nine degrees warmer than the average. All right, so I took a look at that list and I kind of had some fun this afternoon by seeing what happened in February those same years after all those warm Januaries. Now, there were some variants. We had a few cold Februaries mixed in, but for the most part, you get a composite that looks like this when you average together all those years, all those Februaries that follow those warm Januaries. It looks like the pattern generally continues uh, when you look at uh, kind of an analog set. What about March? Eh. <laughs> and, you know, I think this is kind of the right idea. I, I am beginning to have my suspicions that we're going to have February and March this year, and we're going to have March and February, basically. We're going to do a flip-flop, and we've seen this a few times in recent years, and this analog set, uh, the Marches following those really warm Januaries, paints a pretty cold-looking picture, and according to some of our model data, not all of it, but some of it, uh, we may have something similar brewing as we head into the first month of meteorological spring this year. One of the big stories, of course, other than the warmth this season in this January, the lack of snowfall. Here's a look at the seasonal snow totals to date. In southern Ohio, I mean, there's places down here that have hardly had an inch or two. In most of our TV viewing area, we've at least had a handful of inches at this point. Uh, at the Youngstown Warren Airport, uh, we're running 22 point, inch, point something inches behind average. Uh, we have not seen more than 20 inches, really, uh, until you get way up into Trumbull and northern Mercer counties and up into the snow belts. Um, but everywhere you see blue, according to our legend up here, this is under 22 inches of snow so far this winter season. Want to do some uh, comparisons first to average. You know, compared to average, we're in one of the snow deserts uh, for this season so far. The deepest reds, almost right over us, northeast Ohio, northwest PA. Parts of southern and western New York, aside from the immediate Buffalo area, and then up and down the spine of the Appalachians, particularly a, or, or I should say, a particularly snowy area in the higher terrain east of Pittsburgh. Um, but there also amounts have been way below the average. And compared to the most recent winter, last winter, no surprise, we've seen a lot more snow than last winter in the mountains of the western U.S. and up across the northern plains. And here locally, compared to last winter, uh, we've had going on, I think, 20 inches, 20 fewer inches uh, than last winter. So it kind of looks like the map I just showed you, the long-term average, but just compared to last year, uh, it has been a very paltry winter in terms of snowfall. Western Ohio has done a little bit better this year than last year. All right, it's kind of a similar radar nationwide to what I showed you last evening. All the trouble is down here in the Southern Plains where ice storm warnings and winter storm warnings are out. It's just been a skating rink around Dallas, just a nightmare on the roads. And, you know, this part of the south, they don't have a lot of infrastructure to deal with this. But even an ice, an ice storm of this magnitude, even in the north, would be very problematic. But it's really problematic once you get down into these southern latitudes that don't deal with this kind of thing very often. All right, something cool to maybe check out tonight. Uh, keep your expectations in check. But uh, we have a comet that was actually just kind of discovered last year. And upon closer inspection, it was discovered that this is going to make its closest approach to Earth in about 50,000 years particularly bright. Uh, this is not something like the International Space Station where there's like a five minute window that you can watch it. This is visible in the northern to northwestern sky all night if the weather cooperates. The weather will cooperate most of this evening. We've got a pretty crystal clear sky overhead early this evening, but uh, high clouds will filter in throughout the night. You may have seen pictures of this online, this big bright green thing. You're not going to see that with your naked eye. Don't, don't uh, again, keep your expectations in check. You're not going to see those beautiful scenes like you've seen on the internet maybe of this thing with your with your bare eyes but if you have a telescope or binoculars and the weather cooperates in your location maybe just maybe you'll be able to check this out for tonight all right as i mentioned at the top of the video we're into meteorological uh, uh the final month i should say of meteorological winter 
uh, December, January, February, and our average high temperature in February goes from about 35 on today's date to 41 on the last day of the month. So average lows do the same thing. Of course, they're rising quickly. We're also gaining daylight pretty quickly. Solar spring begins in just a few days. That's the three-month period that we're gaining daylight at the fastest rate. Uh, we gain an hour and 10 minutes worth of daylight this month. We go from 10 hours and 7 minutes today to March the 1st, 11 hours and 17 minutes. Hard to believe we're only about, what, five, six weeks away from daylight saving time returning and all of a sudden the sun sets in the seven o'clock hour and you know that seems like it's got to be a ways off right well it's only five or six days i forget what the date is in march but it's maybe around the 10th or something like that it's not that far into the future all things considering all right into the near future we have a warm front heading our way for tomorrow so despite the frigid start in the teens it'll be a noticeably warmer afternoon for tomorrow but then hot on its heels a cold front and i mean a doozy of a cold front this is an a true Arctic cold front, and I think late tomorrow evening, this may be a little fast on our model, but maybe closer to midnight, a pretty good chance of some shower, uh, some snow showers and some flurries, maybe enough to coat the ground in some spots, and whether you get a coating of snow or not, everywhere it's going to turn harshly cold tomorrow night, and while it won't be super crazy windy, it'll be windy enough to create some nasty wind chills. Now, kind of an interesting day coming our way on Friday, I'm going to back this up a little bit, especially in the morning on Friday. It'll be interesting to see how this sets up. We might have a band with a Lake Huron connection that wants to wiggle down somewhere into northeast Ohio, and especially, I think, into northwest PA. If this materializes and it wiggles far enough to the south, some parts of our viewing area may get in on this. And it's conceivable that in a very localized area, you could see a couple or even a few inches of snow on Friday. But it'd be a narrow corridor, and it's almost impossible to say at this point if it occurs or not, or and also where exactly it would occur. But odds would favor maybe Mercer County for this. For the rest of us, it's flurries and just a harsh day to be outside on Friday. And it's going to stay pretty cold into Friday night and Saturday morning thanks to high pressure building in and the sky becoming almost crystal clear. Then a warm front heads our way Saturday morning. And so just like that, we're going to break out of the deep freeze and we'll even approach freezing Saturday afternoon, then get well above freezing. Sunday afternoon probably stay above freezing for a lot of early next week. So wind chills will definitely be a factor by Thursday night into Friday morning. We'll wake up Friday morning with wind chills below zero. They probably stay below zero all day or maybe edge up close to zero before the afternoon is through and probably near to below zero throughout the night. Again, as far as snow accumulations go, this is, you know, this is a first stab. Uh, someone up here in the primary snow belts of Northwest PA, especially, might get four or five inches. I doubt anyone gets eight up here. But depending on where these bands wiggle, especially if we get kind of a dominant Lake Huron band, I could see where we get a couple inches. Uh, maybe most likely in Mercer County, but I can't even rule it out in Trumbull County at this point. For the rest of us, it's probably a dusting at most. But something we'll be keeping an eye on uh, between now and Thursday night, especially into Friday morning. As I mentioned on social media today it could always be worse some eye-popping wind chills this is going to be the coldest air mass that's invaded new england in a long time coming our way uh friday into saturday these wind chills saturday morning you know getting to the edge of the color table here and my color table ends at minus 60. there's going to be some sheltered areas in maine and new hampshire especially that probably see a wind chill pretty close to minus 60 and you know we've got some minus 50 showing up in some you know fairly populated areas now the population's pretty low up here but uh some of the some of the more populated areas i should say in northern new england uh could see some again some real eye-popping wind chills um by saturday morning so it could be worse and even there though it's going to be a quick turnaround just like it will be at home 18 below average on friday to 18 above average by tuesday i think we've got some 50s in our future by early next week and plenty of 40s for daytime highs in our future it looks like as we go deeper into the month of february lots to talk about tonight and of course we'll have you covered on the upcoming cold and snow and the big temperature turnaround and if you uh, happen to step outside and maybe catch a glimpse of the comet this evening especially if you have some high-end equipment if you've got a nice telescope um, and you can uh, take a picture and send it along we'd appreciate that weather picks pics at wfmj.com or hit me up on social media i'll see you right back here same time same place on thursday